Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to talk about the 3D view capabilities of QGIS 3.0. And this is pretty exciting because it wasn't available at all in QGIS 2. It's something that's completely new. It has a long way to go, but I think it's a good start and I think it's worth exploring and figuring out how to use. It might be useful for you. So what we have here is a map project in QGIS. It's got four layers. Two of these are vector layers. One is the same linear buffer layer that we've been working with. And then the other is a burring owl habitat buffers. And we have an imagery layer. And underneath the imagery layer is the results of this raster model that we built. And this isn't really an elevation surface, but we're going to use it like it was. It's actually a cost surface. So the higher values represent a high cost of constructing a pipeline due to steep slopes or a high probability of being wet and muddy, or having known environmental constraints. And we're going to use this as the elevation surface. And then this imagery layer is going to be draped over top of it. So to view this data in 3D, we're going to go to the View menu. And the second item down is a new 3D map view. And that's going to open up this other box right here. And the first thing we have to do is click this little wrench button, and we have to tell it which layer is an elevation surface. And so again, that's this cost layer that we've created. I'm going to set the vertical scale to 4 because the values in this cost surface don't go very high. This just exaggerates the vertical scale to make it a little bit easier to see changes in elevation. And that's it. Once I click OK, we can see that all these layers are clipped now to the elevation surface. And I can pan this map around just the way it sits, just by dragging it with the mouse, just like I could a regular map. To zoom in and out, I have to use the scroll wheel on a mouse, and that can be a problem if you're working on a laptop. It took me a while to figure that out. And I'm not sure how to simulate scrolling on my laptop. I think some laptops have that ability. So anyway, if you're working on a laptop and you can't figure out how to zoom in and out, just plug a mouse in and use a, and use a scroll wheel. So this other button is just reset view. If you click that, it's just going to zoom into the extent of the map. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit for this next part. I think it'll make it easier to see what's happening. So there aren't any controls on here for tilting and rotating like there are like Google Earth or something like that. And again, it took me a while to figure out how to do this. It's not documented anywhere. I did finally see it in a blog post somewhere and that helped a lot. But if you hold the shift key down and move the mouse left and right, it rotates the map and holding the shift key down and moving the mouse forward and backward tilts the map up and down. That helps you see some of the vertical relief. So I'm going to zoom in now again using the scroll bar and now you can start to see some of the vertical relief. And if I rotate again using the shift key and moving the mouse left and right again you can start to see some of the topographic relief. You can zoom in again now one thing that I found interesting, this is actually a tiled map service that I'm getting the imagery from. And so the imagery is different at different scales. And one thing that I found interesting was that those scales seem to be respected even when you're tilting. So if I tilt this up, I can see in the foreground I have more detailed imagery than I do in the background. And if I tilt it down, again it's getting further away so the scale changes and so I get different imagery again. That's something I thought was pretty cool. And you can see these vector layers just drape over top. They give some context as well. So you can create some pretty cool effects this way. There's a lot that you can do just with an underlying digital elevation model and draping some imagery and some vector layers over top of it. And so I think it's a good start. There's some work that needs to be done, however. I've read a couple of blog posts about the 3D view in QGIS 3.0, and they all say that it tends to have problems if you're using an integrated graphics card. So that would be one where the graphics processor is integrated with your computer CPU. And that's a common thing on a lot of laptops. That it works a lot better if you have a standalone graphics card like you might have on a desktop computer or maybe even a high-end gaming laptop. And I'm not sure if that's several different people's experience that they all reported or if they're just repeating one person's experience. But it seems to be true in my case. I'm working on a laptop right now. And while I can do all this stuff that we've seen, there's several things that I can't do. That is, in all the blog posts I read, it said that you had to open the styling panel and enable 3D rendering for these layers. And I haven't done that for these. It seems to handle draping a vector layer over top of the 
did the elevation model just fine. But if I open the layer styling panel, and I can do that either by going to View, and then Panels, and then Layer Styling. Or I can also get there by clicking this button all the way over here on the left at the top of the Layers panel. And that shows a message, Open the Layer Styling Dock. And then under this button that looks like a 3D box, right up here we have Enable 3D Render. And you can see there's a bunch of settings that you can adjust, including you can set some height and extrusion values. And you can also read those extrusion values from a field in the vector data. And that's how these cityscape scenes and things are created. But as soon as I do that in mine, it crashes the whole thing. And again, I'm working on a laptop. That seems to be an issue. Maybe on a high-end desktop computer, it would work fine. But you can explore it for yourself on your own. So if I click this and then set the extrusion up to, say, 10, I get not responding. And the whole thing seems to be hung up. Now I've also seen in some of the blog posts that you need to export it as a geopackage layer. And I have this linear buffer layer as a geopackage layer. But the burrowing owl buffer was just a shapefile. That seems to work just fine as long as you're just draping it over a 3D layer. I had the same issue when I just had the linear buffer and no shapefile in there. So I don't think that's the cause of some of these problems that I've been having. But I'd be curious to hear from you if you try this on your own computers, if you've been able to have success with using extrusion to build out vector layers. Anyhow, I think it's a good start. Clearly it has some work to do. It's not an arc scene quite yet, but there are a lot of cool things you can do with it. And if you can do what you need to do, then you can save yourself $2,500 on 3D Analyst. I suspect we'll be seeing improved versions down the road. All right, thanks for listening. Just a reminder, this is one lecture in a course of about 80 similar lectures. So if you like what you hear, there will be a full-blown course called QGIS 3.0 for GIS professionals. It's going to be available in mid-December on udemy.com. I also have a few other available courses that mostly have to do with web programming. So if you're interested in web programming for GIS applications, I have an introductory course that's available now on Udemy. And this course really is a broad overview. It's about 13 hours of content, but it's a broad overview of web programming specifically oriented towards GIS applications. So we'll talk about HTML and CSS and JavaScript and some PHP and SQL as well. But we'll also talk specifically about the Leaflet JavaScript API for web mapping, the Turf JavaScript API for spatial analysis, and the PostGIS database for storing and analyzing data on the server. And then I have a more detailed course. It's also about 13 hours. It's just specifically about leaflet and turf. And I have a third course that's about four hours now, but I have a few lectures that I'm going to add to it. It'll probably end up being five or six hours, but it's about issues specifically related to creating mobile GIS and mobile mapping applications with leaflet. So if you're interested in web programming, I'd encourage you to take a look at these courses. Right now you can use a coupon code COURSE3, all capital letters, to get any of these courses for $20. That's an 80% discount off the list price. So thanks again for listening, and keep an eye on my YouTube channel if you want to see more content that's going to be coming up.